Hey guys, Bob Game back today bringing our video and today we're going over the new weapon the tech evolver and converted it into the Scar FN hammer or heat adaptive modular rifle. So this is an interesting weapon and there's going to be another conversion I'll do tomorrow with this. Um, and if you're paying attention to this video, you can probably have an idea where I'm going to be going with it. But <clears throat> this is essentially a Scar 17. It's supposed to be a mix between I believe like three different weapons. So let's go ahead and back out. I'll show you how to make the Scar hammer Heat Adaptive Modular Rifle IAR, the Individual Automatic Rifle, which was supposed to replace, it wasn't the, the running, it was submitted to replace the uh, M249 saw, it was beat out by the M27 IAR, which is der derivative of the M416, or the HK416 uh, line of rifles. So here is our final design for the TAC Eradicator, converted it to the FN Hammer, Heat Hammer IAR, so Heat Adaptive Modular Rifle. Let's go ahead back out. Now for this weapon, let's go to the challenges quick. So you guys, this is week week four challenges just added today when this video is up. So tech eradicator complete five, any five challenges from week four. So here you go, all the week four challenges. You also have separate challenges for zombies if you go in. So any of these, you can see here's the multiplayer and here's the zombies. So either any of these five and you'll unlock the eradicator. And then you'll have it as an LMG option. So let's go ahead and look at it here. Go ahead at base. We're going to go ahead to the TAC Eradicator. You can see here, fully automatic LMG utilizes a prototype uh, closed to open bolt system. And because we have uh, a weird timeout issue with this, we'll go ahead and jump again. But just reading the description there, it's a closed to open bolt system, which affects the rate of fire here in game. Now, I don't believe that was the way it was in uh, real life when this thing was about, but utilize a, a fire method going from closed to open bolt system starting out at a blazing fast rate of fire before quickly be, uh, slowing down and becoming more uh, more accurate it says which um, not sure that's true so we'll we'll sh I'll show that here so attack eradicator you have 22 attachments here you can see the stats um, damage rate of fire or the range we'll look at the rate of fire here so first up let's go ahead and jump into it so what we're gonna want for this you have a couple different barrel options uh, the handguard's always going to remain the same. So you have a short, which is maybe a, a whole inch shorter than this one. You have a long, and then you have a light barrel. So you can see the pros and cons of that. We're going to stay for this. The purpose of this, we're going to stay with the base barrel. We're also going to skip out on the muzzle. Laser option, again, this is personal preference. You can go ahead and put a muzzle on if you want. However, typically, I didn't see... This was mainly a prototype weapon, so I never saw it fired from a... Uh, with any muzzle device besides a standard uh, comp break that comes on the weapon. So we're going to put the only B laser there. You can see for aim stability and on sight, sprint to fire speed. We're going to run into the optic here. Again, this is more so personal choice. Typically, the original uh, hammer would have been fired using the, utilizing a ACOG. So you could definitely run with that or the ACOG with a delta point that you have here in game. I'm going to run with, with uh, the hybrid fire point or the hammer, put it on the hammer because it seems fitting. So you're going to get a 4.3 magnification with a dual uh, mounted uh, red dot there for the top mounted RMR. Go ahead and select that. Buttstock option, we're going to leave at base. However, you do have um, some options here. So you have the same one that comes with the Mark 20 SSR. You have a new buttstock, which I don't believe was on the base scar. However, it may have been. Um, you have a, the other buttstock. We've seen this one before for the Mark 17. However, you can't apply the blueprint options with this. So it's essentially a new version of the buttstock that comes on the Mark 17. And you have the ballast stock. So we're going to run the base stock. Magazine options. So here we go. At base, you have a 60-round drum. Even though it's modeled after the 50-round drum. And I'll go over, I think, why that is. So this is modeled after the 50-round drum from the Scar H, the battle rifle, or the Mark 17. 45-round drum is modeled after the 30-round magazine for the Mark 17. And then you have a 150-round uh, C drum here. C bag, which is just crazy. So we're going to run with this because we're replicating the hammer. So we're going to run with that ammunition here. I'm going to use this um, just instead of another attachment just to, we're going to put on the crippling power one. So the hollow point going to, if you hit in the legs, it'll cripple the enemy, slow them down so they can't sprint. Unbrill option, being that it's a hammer, IAR, we're going to throw on a bipod. So um, you could also put on a bipod grip would also be a good option, but um, we're going to run the bipod on this or the grip pod is what those other ones were. So we're going to run that. This is our final design. Now, for the purposes of it being a scar, we're going to go ahead and throw on the uh, clay camel here. 
So you can see how this looks. It, they do have, when you load this, it has like a semi-dirty looking version of the camo, which I wish you could have kind of that dirty looking version of the camo. But we're going to go with the clay camo to replicate the scarred color and back out. This is our final design for the FN Scar Hammer for the Heat Adaptive Modular Rifle. This is the I, Hammer IAR Individual Automatic Rifle. So this was supposed to, this was in the, like I said, submitted to the bid to replace the, the um, M249 saw it was beat out by the M27. So here you have the weapon. Really quick, I just want to remove the mag. Let's go ahead and look at this. Um, if we zoom in on this, you can see on the mag well there it says caliber 762 millimeters. So it is the same caliber as the Scar H, which is the battle rifle of the of the Scar platform in game. So being that that's how it is everything else is pretty much the same you have the fire controls which are ambidextrous here on this weapon so you have the select fire you have the uh magazine release on the left and the right hand side and then you have the bolt release there um on the left side above the bolt release you have the charging handle which is still reciprocating for this one and then you obviously have a um more advanced handguard there which is hiding the advanced gas system for the heat adapted modular rifle um and then you see the buttstock is foldable to the right hand side as well obviously with this sort of uh c mag on there that wouldn't really be possible to fold it all the way <laughs> because it'd be in the way but you have full length pick rail on top pick rails available on 12 3 6 and 9. so this is our fn hammer iar heat adaptive modular rifle let's go ahead and jump into the fire range of this weapon and see how it handles so here is our hammer iar 100 rounds of 7.62 by 51 millimeters. So this is the one that we'll get into more details of this, but let's go ahead. Now, it's going to start with a fast rate of fire and die down. So testing it, it's going to be about the first six to seven shots are going to be very fast and accurate, and then you're going to get additional recoil, and the rate of fire is going to slow down to somewhere in the 600 range. So let's go ahead and try it here, and just watch, count the first eight shots, and you'll see the rapid fire, and then it will slow. Then you need to pause it. You can't just burst it. You need to have a little bit of a pause there. Fast rate of fire. So you can see that with that fast rate of fire, and then it starts kicking and slowing down with the rate of fire. But that initial six to eight round burst is very accurate and very fast. So the rate of fire of this, we'll look at it when we get out of here. It's around 800 something rounds per minute, like 850. But then it's gonna definitely, it seems like it drops to the 650 uh, fire range, firing right there. Obviously, we have our bipod. So, if you also, if I fire from the hip, you can watch the reciprocating charging handle there, which the way he's holding it would get scar by hardcore, but um, it's clipping through the C mag too. So, that's also a bug here that I'm noticing just now. So you can see how it's going to slow down there with the rate of fire. Pretty unfortunate. That's a bug with the clipping issue there with the hand they're going to need to fix. But regardless. So let's go ahead and look at the recoil for this weapon. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just, I'm going to fire off the first, uh, we'll just let it rip first. So you'll see the initial fast rate of fire and how it slows down. Not controlling it. Okay. Now let's try and control it, giving the same amount of rounds if we can, around 30 rounds. So we did way more than 30 there, but you can see you're gonna get a lot of horizontal recoil after that initial eight round burst. So the recoil picks up. So the description of the weapon is definitely wrong. It's not more controllable with sustainable fire. So opposite to the Black Ops, 4, Black Ops 2 version, where it become more accurate with sustained fire, it's opposite here. So let's look at the first six to eight rounds with that uh, faster rate of fire with the um, with the closed bolt. Not controlling. Okay, now let's try and control it. That's gonna be straight vertical. So I'm gonna fire off, we have 30 rounds here. Let's fire off uh, 
around 15 if we can, and I won't uh, monitor it. So you can see there, you have the original burst, and then it's going to kick that little kick right there. So pretty easy to control as long as you pull straight down vertical with that first six to eight, and then it's going to get a little crazy after that. And after that, when you're controlling it, that's where you're going to see this horizontal kick. So that's the Mark, or well, not the Mark 17. This is the FN Hammer IAR. Go ahead and back out and look at the camos really quick. Here is the camouflage you get at base. So you have pretty ugly camos, unfortunately. This one here is actually pretty cool. I do like this one. Um, zombies camos, not good either. Uh, but again, you have you have over 800 camos here in game. So um, just because some of the base camos for the weapon aren't good doesn't mean that there's not a bunch of really nice camos. So that's the heat adaptive modular rifle. Let's jump into the gameplay with this weapon. Using it here on an evasion. Again, we're using it as an LMG. We're utilizing the bipod, trying to trying to use it um, for support fire things like that, as you would an IAR or a squad automatic type weapon, uh, which this was meant to replace the saw. So. With this weapon, the description is pretty accurate to what it is in real life. It's it's made to fire from a closed bolt to start and automatically will detect the heat temperatures within the within the weapon, the barrel itself. And as the temperature rises, it'll switch to an open bolt to cool down. Um, and then once the barrel's cool, it'll go back to a closed bolt. So heat adaptive modular rifle, it automatically will switch from a closed to an open bolt. Now in real life, I don't that did not affect the rate of fire to my knowledge. Anything I uh, was privy to of this weapon in the past or anything I looked at to just try and re-familiarize myself with this weapon. This was around a 2010. This thing was entered um, early 2000-ish. It was entered into that um, IAR. I was calling it an individual automatic rifle. It's an infantry automatic rifle for the IAR. So that, that competition was early 20, 2000s, 2010-ish. Uh, and again, it was beat out by the HK uh, M27 IAR, which was a derivative of the HK416. Um, it was beat up by that. But again, the closed open bolt system did not affect the rate of fire on the weapon in real life to my knowledge. However, with the gas settings, you could definitely probably cook off rounds a little bit faster um, by adjusting the gas settings. So here with this in-game model, they're kind of saying that the closed open bolt also is uh, automatically adjusting the gas settings pretty much is what, what they're saying there. However, um, it doesn't really switch back to fast rate of fire. You need to have a pause and then it's gonna fire off faster rate of fire rounds. So the rate of fire for this weapon, um, while you're watching the gameplay as I'm uh, looking, is gonna be 857 rounds per minute. Now that's the initial burst, I believe, right? So after that, it'll drop down probably around the, maybe in the 700s, it seems like. It's gonna drop pretty substantially uh, for the rate of fire and become more inaccurate. You can see that in the recoil, you're gonna get a lot of um, horizontal bounce with this thing and a little bit of vertical so by putting a muzzle device on there i think that'll help out a lot this thing i think is going to be there's really not much of a reason to use the actual um to use the actual scar age uh, other than damage you have 39 um you have 36 to 39 damage with the torso to the uh head with here with the hammer and then for the actual scar heavy the battle rifle version um you have 49 to 38 headshot to torso and 28 to lower torso so you obviously have a you have a much lower damage profile with this weapon however it's a lot more accurate especially with that initial burst rate of fire there with that six to eight shots before it starts slowing down um is key so now one thing here that's different from this is the iar the heat death of modular rifle um, version of this that was in Black Ops 2 and that this is supposedly kind of this is supposed to be really three different weapons so this weapon the hammer in real life IAR was chambered at 5.56 by 45 NATO so this is obviously chambered in 762 by 51 which is the same as the battle rifle version of the scar so that's not accurate and they put in-game models like a hundred round C drum for 762 which would just be extremely overkill and way too heavy on a rifle so it's weird because it's almost as if they wanted to make this a 5.56 LMG, but did it as a 7.62 LMG. Now, the other thing here is that at base, you have a 50 round drum and then you have a 45 round mag. The 50 round drum or the 60, 75 round drum, I think is what it is. Um, it is at base. So the, the models for that, 
um, are different than what they are. Well, the models are the same, but the amount of rounds only. So the 50 round drum at base is is actually 75, and on the Scar Heavy, it's a 50 round holds 50. So the 30 round mag on the Scar Heavy is the same magazine that's used for the 45 round magazine here on the Eradicator or the Hammer. So being that the Eradicator is fighting 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO, it's almost as if they couldn't decide what they wanted to do with this. It's clearly not really supposed to be a 5.56 rifle because they don't have um, the Scar Light features. In real life, the Hammer is essentially identical looking to the Scar Light, which we have in game um, as an assault rifle variant of the Scar platform. I don't remember what the in game name is, but it's, it's one of the carryover weapons from Modern Warfare 2, also. So it looks identical to that. This handguard design is very new here. Now, the other thing to note here is that FN did submit a version, a more updated, modified version of the hammer into the NGSW program. Now, that's one of the weapons that lost out to the uh, XM7 or the spear from Sig Sauer, which we have here in game as the Bass B. So there was an NGSW updated version of the hammer um, in game or in real life, excuse me, and that was chambered in the 6.8 by 51 cartridge. So it's almost as if this is what they're supposed to be modeling that after. However, um, it's still taking 7.62 by 51. So I'm wondering, um, clearly with the ammo count and the magazine count, right, that that 30 round magazine is now holding 45 rounds and the 50 round drum is now holding 75. So it makes me think they, they wanted to make this a 6.8 by uh, 51 and not a 7.62 by 51. Thus, there's more rounds in the same magazine models that are shared with the Scar Heavy. So that's kind of my thoughts there. Um, so it's really supposed to be a cross between three weapons. You have pretty much the actual Hammer IAR, which was chambered at 5.56, because you have that big C drum that you would see on the IAR. It was supposed to be a cross between the Mark 17 or the Scar Heavy, which is 7.62 by 51 battle rifle, and also supposed to be probably a cross or a variant of the Hammer and GSW, which was submitted for that next generation squad weapon in 6.8 by 51 millimeters. So that's this weapon. I'm not going to go into the, the the information for the hammer because we really don't have any information. There's very little, if any, footage out there of the actual hammer in action. Very hard to find images. Again, it was just a few models were produced and it was submitted and there was really nothing really made available to the public at the time. But again, it is an FM rifle from, Bel from Belgium, FM Herstal. Um, the SCAR itself has been in service since 2009. The hammer was put into that, that uh, IAR program 2010s-ish. Um, but obviously the SCAR Heavy is adopted within US SOCOM. The Mark 16 or the SCAR Light was, had a brief adoption period um, also before it was phased out and, and continued to be the M4 with the, the assault mod kits and things like that decided to be used instead. But the SCAR Heavy or the SCAR H Mark 16 still um, is used by US SOCOM and that's formally adopted, but the um, Scar Hammer was not adopted. That was beat up by the M27 IAR. And the M27 IAR, even though that got the bid to replace the saw, that doesn't seem to be happening whatsoever. And especially now with the NGSW program, the uh, saw is now supposedly being replaced by the XM250, which was SIG's entry for for the LMG version of 6.8 by 51, which FN also submitted a version for that with the uh, with the FN Evils, which supposedly we're getting here in season one potentially. So the FN Evils was an LMG, um, again, shaving a 6.8 by 51 and or 5.56 and or 7.62 by 51 millimeter, um, able to change out that caliber. So um, interesting to see the models and what they did with this weapon. Again, this is, there's really, in my mind, in, you have lower damage, but there's really no need to use the Scar Heavy anymore because this has better recoil, at least for the initial firing rounds. Then you're gonna pick up and it's gonna get a little crazy. Now in game, the rate of fire is pretty fast. However, in real life, um, the SCAR Heavy is around 550 rounds per minute, and the Hammer, which was chambered at 5.56, was 650 rounds per minute, same as the SCAR um, Light. So there was no fluctuation with rate of fire with the close and open bolt. Again, they're kind of making it seem like the close and open bolt is adjusting the gas settings automatically also, which is not the case. But we have another conversion probably coming tomorrow with this. Um, if you were paying attention to my description, you probably have a good idea of what I'm going to go with with that. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Tech Evolver or the uh, Scar Hammer? Question mark because it's supposed to be an amalgamation of three different rifles. Um, but it is strange that they chambered this in 762 by 51 instead of opting for a 5.56 or a 6.8. Um, there's also other other FN products in uh, there's a there's 
multiple other FN submissions to other programs, which are kind of different iterative versions of the SCAR, um, which you, they could have gone with one of those also, but this is what they went with, which I'm not going to complain. I love this weapon. I think it's really nice. It's a really cool, um, you can make some really nice tactical builds with this. So really neat. However, just the cal the, the caliber that they went with uh, is a little confusing given the magazines and the, what the magazines are holding, and they're the same models as the Battle Rifle. They're holding more ammo. So it's almost as if they meant to go with a 6.8 cartridge, but went with a 7.62. So I don't know um, if that's something that's going to be fixed or changed down the road. I'm assuming not, but I just thought that was interesting to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you guys enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Helps out smaller channels like myself. All the links are down below. We have Warzone launching next Wednesday on the 6th. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts on this weapon, best builds, things like that, um, and any other conversions you guys want to see upcoming um, with this game's life cycle. Supposedly, we're getting five weapons with Season 1, so there's a lot of content coming here, um, and I'll have another conversion for this most likely tomorrow. And again, if you guys can guess what that's going to be, put it in the comments down below. Till next time, Buffer Gaming, out.